Hello, welcome to the CSE Capstone class. Uh, my name is Jose Vidal and I will be teaching this class. Uh, here we are at the class homepage. It's cse.se.edu slash capstone up here. And uh, this is where you will find everything that you need for this class. So every, all the homeworks, all the milestones and everything about grading is in this website and I'm going to take you over it. I'm going to give you an overview of this class. So a little bit about this class. Uh, the Capstone Project is a two semester class. We start with 490 in the fall and then 492 in the spring. I teach both classes and but really it's one big project. You start in August and finish in April, May. Um, or here we have the 490 syllabus, which uh, explains what you need to know for this first half of the class. So let's go over this. Uh, you have some contact information. There's my name. You can click on that to go to my home page, uh, my email address, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a little bit of the descriptions and goals of the class. Uh, as I said, you know, the main goal is to build a large software project. Uh, meeting time and room, we do not meet. There is no lecture for this class. Instead, I meet with every group uh, individually. Well, each team meets in my office uh, every two weeks. And uh, as it says here, the typical meeting uh, goes as follows. It's mostly a progress report. So you come in, you tell me this is the stuff that we did in the last two weeks. Uh, I might ask, you know, some individual reports, you know, what each individual person did. Uh, and then, you know, we make some decisions. Uh, you can usually, there might be some issues about things that can or maybe cannot get done or libraries, etc. And we can discuss that. So uh, it's like a real world scenario where I'm your program manager, say, and, uh, you know, you just report to me and tell me what you're doing. And uh, we can make sure that you're on track to finish. Uh, you should also uh, meet uh, with your team every week, uh, at least. Right. So the idea is that, you know, you're going to be working in a team with these people. It's going to be a new experience. Right. So you're going to have to decide uh, how you're going to do that. What we recommend is weekly meetings at a minimum. Uh, first of all, you know, get everybody's email or SMS or whatever. Figure out how you're going to communicate. Uh, we're going to use Slack. So I highly recommend you use that, too. But you don't have to. Um, once you do that, we have a way of communicating, then you can use that to set up meetings. And before the meeting, you send out a little agenda saying, you know, just a couple lines this is what we're going to discuss. Usually, you know, the next milestone. Uh, then during the meeting, you discuss, figure out, go over the milestone. This is what it says. This is what we're going to do. Uh, you make some decisions about how you're going to approach it. And then at the end, you assign task or hopefully self-assign task. Everybody says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this other thing. Um, you know, once, uh, you know, once the programming starts, uh, you can usually take those assignments and add them as GitHub issues. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and, uh, so they're online and everybody knows what everybody else is doing. And, you know, when things get done, they get, the issues get closed you can see it online. So there's some nice tools like GitHub issues, which we're going to be using, uh, or you can also use Trello or Waffle.io or some other of these, uh, issue trackers. Uh, like I said, we're going to be using Slack for communication. So there is the uh, URL to our group, SC Capstone. Uh, I'm going to send invites uh, sometime during the first week of classes. Uh, in Slack, it's just chat, right? And there's these channels. You have, you know, hashtag general is a channel. Uh, so it's basically a little room where you go in and chat and that one is uh, the general one is for general questions. I have some other channels for topic for platforms like Android, iOS and web. So if there's other people in other groups that are building and say an Android app, you can go in there and ask them questions about it. Uh, there's going to be one. Once you create your group, you're going to give it a name. Uh, you're going to give it a GitHub name. And you should also create a Slack channel with that name and uh, put everybody else and me in it and maybe your, the TAs too. Um, and uh, that's something we're going to use for quick communications, you know, when you have questions, uh, quick stuff like that, just, you know, quick question and answer stuff. You can also create your own private channel. If you don't want me listening in, you, you can actually create your own private channel 
in Slack that I won't be able to, you know, hear or see what you're talking about there. Uh, and uh, in fact, if you want me to read what you wrote, or if you are asking me a question, you should make sure that you put at Jose and Vidal. That's sort of the way Slack works. If they put your username with an ad before it, then that person with that username gets a ping and appears on my Slack thing and says, oh, you got a new message. Because otherwise, I'm not going to read it because there's a lot of people in this class and I'm, I'm just not going to browse all that. Uh, so if you have a question for me, make sure you ask it directly. DM, direct message me. Uh, GitHub. So everything is going to be on GitHub. Once we form teams, uh, you're going to decide on a name. You're going to create a GitHub uh, project uh, with that name. Actually, I will create it for you because they have to be under our uh, group. So but I'll do that and give you full powers over it. And then that GitHub repo is going to be where you put everything, right? So all your code is going to go in Git and then push to your GitHub repo. Uh, we will be using the GitHub issues once you start coding, and really you can start using it even for the first milestones. Uh, you're going to create issues there. Uh, you're going to assign them to people, and we're going to be looking at those. We're going to create issues sometimes for you if things are wrong or need fixing, etc. So we're going to be using the GitHub issues. Uh, everything else you're also going to turn in using the GitHub wiki for your repo. So these are especially the first few milestones. They're all like writing or drawing and stuff. Uh, those are going to be in the wiki. So in other words, uh, everything will be in your GitHub repo. So you do not email me anything. Uh, do not email me even Slack attachments or whatever. That's not going to get graded. If it's not in the repo, it's not going to get graded. So everything needs to be in your GitHub repo. Grading, now here is the grading. You see we have all these milestones. These are like homeworks. I'm going to go over them in a little bit detail in a second. But you can see here are the uh, percentages. So how much of a percentage does each milestone represent? Um, the main thing I want to talk about here is this one, the personal contribution. You see it says up to 100%. So the idea here is that uh, some of these other milestones, they are uh, mostly about the project, right? So the project, the app you're building might be awesome. Uh, but you, you, you might not have contributed anything to it. In that case, you will fail the class. So uh, this is personal contribution. This is what this is trying to capture. The fact that if you don't contribute to the app, you will fail the class. So up to 100%, doesn't matter how good the app is. If you didn't do anything, you get nothing. Uh, how do we determine your personal contribution? That's right here. Uh, there's a couple of things that we use. Uh, first, at the end of the semester, we have this peer evaluation. So that's a secret submission. Everybody in the team tells me uh, what they did and what everybody else in the team, team did. Uh, I take that. Uh, also, one of the milestones is you have to maintain a GitHub, uh, uh, sorry, a personal log every week in, in your wiki. Um, so I'm going to be looking at those to see what you did every week. Uh, this also, of course, everything is kept in Git. Uh, even the wiki pages are kept in Git. You might not realize that, but they are. Uh, so I can see who did what when, right? So I can see all the commits that everybody did. And we're definitely going to use that to see did you how much code you contributed, did you contribute any code, and how significant was it. Uh, and finally, did you attend the biweekly meetings with me? So I keep attendance to see who attends the meeting and who doesn't. So put all those together, and that's how I figured out the personal contribution. You know, in the end, it's my decision. I decide what your personal contribution is, uh, and that's the final decision there. Uh, but, you know, generally, and this is not a problem, you know, if you do, it doesn't have to be everybody has to be exactly the same or whatever. Uh, I just don't don't want slackers, right? I don't want people that do nothing. Uh, so if you're thinking of doing very little, minimal or nothing, think again. Um, so a little bit of academic integrity and that concludes the syllabus. So that's the 490 syllabus. The 492 syllabus is for next semester. Uh, you'll notice the grading is a little bit different, but mostly it's, it's just basically the same thing. Uh, over here are the milestones. So we have each one numbered. Um, 
this semester we're going to do all the way up to 11. Uh, right. Yeah. So we start out by forming teams. That's, you know, just form a team. It's uh, not much to it. Just getting a name and stuff. Having your first meeting, basically. Uh, then there's the personal log. So every week you have to write uh, in your wiki. So you're going to create a wiki page in your repo. That's your, you know, last name, personal log. So Kirk's personal log. Um, and then you write what you did that week, uh, put in the date. Uh, that's it. So it should be short, just five, ten minutes, a couple of sentences. You know, don't go into a lot of detail. It's just so that we know, everybody knows really in your team what you have been up to. Uh, research, you're also, as you, you know, the moment you start, you pick a platform which is mostly chosen for you. Uh, you're going to have to learn about it, right? So if you picked Android and you've never done Android programming, now you have to learn Android programming. Uh, same with iOS or, you know, Laravel or the Google App Engine, whatever. Uh, and you're going to have to start doing that in August, uh, September, um, you know, just building Hello World pro pro programs just by yourself. Just make sure you understand how to build a simple app, etc. Um, obviously, you can work with your team, and I suggest you do that to learn the platform. So you're going to be doing all that during the first month, month and a half, just working by yourself, learning the platform. Um, that's that's what that's all about. And then uh, the project description again. This is after your first meeting with your client. You know, you want to get like a minimal idea of what you're going to be doing, just a general idea. Uh, and uh, and then set up write up three personas. So uh, you'll notice here, you know, for this milestone here, I link to some other slides. Uh, I'm sorry, videos and slides uh, that describe. The, they're going to explain to you what a persona is and you know what you should do. So I have uh, all this other under here under videos. They're also under there. I have several videos that are sort of mapped to particular milestones that you you know. So you should watch them before doing a milestone. And they're also linked from the milestone. Uh, also know that a lot of these milestones have deliverables. Make sure you read that because that's what we're going to be grading. You know, the deliverable is what you have to deliver to us. And that's what we're going to be looking at. So if you don't do those things, that's going to affect your grade. Um, so just make sure you, you check those out. So after your initial meeting with a client, you start building a rough design. So a rough design is, is you know, it's a, we're talking about design of the user interface. So you're just going to use paper and pencil and draw. This is what I think the front page is going to look like. This is what I think this other page is going to look like. Just some drawings um, and show those to your client. Uh, so those drawings are also going to be added. You know, they're going to be uh, added to a wiki page. You're going to create another wiki page here. And uh, you know, we're going to grade that as part of this milestone. Then uh, you're going to get some feedback from your client. Then do a detailed design. For a detailed design, we like to use uh, a wireframing tool or a diagramming tool like Balsamic, Muckflow. There are other ones that basically let you draw. They're a little bit like you know Mac Paint or something. But they let you draw user interfaces really quickly and easily and have all the buttons and stuff already. Uh, so you don't have to do that. Um, so you're going to do that. That's for this milestone six. And then the uh, there's a requirements document. This is more like a contract. Uh, it's a list of features that you're going to deliver to your client, right? So if they're paying, say they were paying you, they would have a list of, you know, these are the things I wanted to do in order for me to pay you. So these are the requirements and you're going to just do the ad list. Make sure you list all the requirements. In our case, you might list some other requirements that are, you know, maybe beyond some things that you don't know yet if we can do or not, but put them there just maybe in case. Uh, there's an architecture. This is uh, architecture milestone. It's a architecture design. So this is how you're going to set up your code. Again, there's a lecture to match this. You want to watch that before you do it. And then you can uh, turn in your architecture design. Uh, source control by this is around the middle of the semester. Uh, I just want everybody to be on Git and be able to pull, push, uh, you know, pull and build. 
um, so that everybody can just make commits locally, build the software, just a simple hello world version of it, push it to GitHub, share it with everybody else so that everybody's programming, right? At that point, everybody is now on the repo with the code. They can build the initial version of the program, which is typically does nothing, right? It just says hi. Um, but, you know, after that, it's just programming, right? So you're all, everything works. Um, so this is around the middle of the semester. At this point, you start building your prototype, which is, you know, sort of this, everything until the end of the semester, right? So at the end of the semester, uh, you have your working prototype that you have to do. Uh, this is going to be basically uh, just a minimal thing that shows that you can build what you will eventually build. So, so you're building a game, uh, sort of a Super Mario game. Uh, uh, a prototype would just have, you know, a little guy on the screen moving and, you know, maybe responding or definitely responding to the keyboard. So you have a keyboard, you can move a little guy, he jumps, he does something, he makes some noise. Uh, the basic idea is that you, you implement, you're using all the libraries you're going to use, right? So you have downloaded and linked and, you know, learned a little bit about all the, in, in that case, 2D libraries. Uh, and, and maybe uh, sound libraries or animation libraries that you're going to use. So you, you're somewhat familiar with everything that you will need to use. Uh, you believe that you're not going to need any more libraries, right? So you believe that this, I have all, everything I need. Now all I need to do is a lot more programming. Um, so that's the purpose of the prototype, right? And uh, to also exercise, like if it's a game, exercise all the layers, right? So you have input, you're going to have some sort of input, the keyboard and the game example. If you have output, like graphics, you're going to do that. Uh, if you have sound output, you're going to do sound. If you have it's an Android app or something that you're using, uh, you know, the all those other sensors, GPS or whatever, you're going to have to use those to do something. It doesn't have to be the eventual thing, but at least tell you, oh, you're here now or give you your GPS coordinates or something so that you show that you can use all the uh, APIs that you're going to be needing to use. So that's the goal uh, for your final prototype, just like the, the minimal uh, requirement. Um, if it's something like a, a web application, it also needs to be deployed, right? So it has to be working on the internet. So if you're building a web application, it's not enough that it works on your laptop. The prototype has to be working on the internet, you know, deployed in some server, hopefully the final server where it will be, um, and all that. So read all this. That's all explained a little bit here in more detail. So you're going to do that. And then uh, the last thing for this semester is you're just going to take that demo and uh, that prototype and demo. And there's a little presentation you have to do with about three slides and then do a quick demo, uh, very quick because you know, it's not going to do much, right? But do a little quick demo of your prototype. Uh, so that's all the milestones for this semester. Then the rest are for next semester. Uh, so in this semester, we end up with a prototype, and then next semester, we turn that prototype into the full-fledged app. Uh, we also do a lot of testing. Uh, we do unit testing, behavioral testing. Uh, we do some quality assurance, but we give it to the other team, and they test it. Uh, so fun stuff. And you do a little demo video and website for it. Okay. So over here are the videos. Uh, so these are also available from within the milestones, but I put them here uh, so you can check them out. They're easier to find this way. Uh, and the last thing is the, this client info. This is for the clients. This is what I email to the clients that they can read and agree to. But you should also definitely also read this, especially uh, the legal issues part here. So because I'm telling the clients that unless they specify uh, that all the code you write belongs to you. So that's what they have agreed implicitly. Uh, I'm also recommending to you and to the clients that you release your code under the MIT open source license. Uh, the good thing for you is that this means this absolves you of any responsibility. Uh, you might not know this, but if you write some code, you put it out there, somebody else uses it and they get into trouble, they could still sue you, even though you didn't pay, they didn't, they didn't pay for it. Uh, it hasn't really happened, but it theoretically is possible. So, um, if you put it on the, the MIT open source license, you know, you put it up there uh, and that absolves you from anything and basically says, you can use my software, here it is, use it at your own risk. 
and it also says that you have to tell other if you use it you have to keep my name right so you gotta tell other people that i wrote it which you might want right because you never know it might become the base for something much bigger and you want to get credit later on say hey i i started that um so i recommend that one and you know you can use that put it up on your github and show prospective employers that's another nice thing you can just show everybody your code uh, uh, here is the, the description of the process of how we're going to choose our projects. Um, so, and um, so basically, the the first thing you need to do, and you need to do that today, is uh, go over here to project proposal. So here are all the news. This is the most recent news at this moment. Uh, this is a list of all the project proposals that I have so far here. So one, two, three. Uh, so the way this is going to work is you're going to read all these projects here and you're going to try to figure out, you know, which one you prefer the most, the second, third, and fourth, right? So I think your top five is what I'm going to go with. Uh, and then I will be posting a form up in this website. It will appear here as another news item at some point soon. And uh, you're going to use that form, you know, just submit your name and your preferences. Uh, once I get everybody's preferences, I am going to run it through this little algorithm, try to maximize happiness. So basically, all teams have to be four or five students. Um, and uh, I want to make everybody as happy as possible. So that's what the algorithm tries to do. It uses a, like a little simula simulated annealing that it does. Uh, turns out this problem is MP complete. So it's very hard. Uh, but it would do a nice job. Uh, so. Uh, that's going to happen. So today, what you need to do is start reading this whole list here. Don't be too scared about the language. You know, notice that these are basically what the clients submitted to me sometimes after going back and forth a couple of times. But, you know, so maybe some things don't make sense. If they don't, uh, feel free. I put, I always put the client's email. So feel free, feel free to email your client asking them questions. Um, if they don't reply, you know, that might be a sign that maybe you don't want to uh, deal with that. Uh, so they have said they would reply. They have all agreed to participate on this. So uh, now there is another one that says no here. Uh, if you have an idea for an app, uh, you can join our startup team. So there's another option that I'm hoping more people will use this year. Last year, only like one group did this. Uh, it's a startup team. So if you have an idea, you just want to do this just find four or five other people uh, in the class that want to do this right so it has to be a team of four or five and uh email me your idea i have to approve it and if i approve it you're done so if you go with the startup way you do not do these other ones you do not submit a form with your preferences because you already have a team right so you're going to be on the startup team so I am hoping this semester I get more than one. I only have one person that has contacted, contacted me so far who is interested in this. Uh, hopefully there'll be four or five uh, startup teams. Uh, games are a great idea for this, right? So you'll notice in my list here, the clients, mm, there's no games. Client, people are not interested in games, but you might be, right? Uh, and game, a uh, little game is, is a very good capstone project, I believe. Uh, you might want to stick with like 2D games because uh, 3D games uh, involve a lot of 3D models with which you know take forever to build uh, unless you buy them. Uh, so maybe you're willing to do that. Um, but uh, we, you know, with two semesters, you'll have more than enough time to build like a 2D you know a puzzle or maybe a platformer type game that is just as good, probably better than most of the stuff in the App Store anyway. Um, so, which is not true for 3D, although there's a lot of bad 3D games too. But um, So I suggest 2D game, uh, or, you know, it could be anything. So any kind of idea for a web application, you know, the one we had last semester, it was sort of a travel blog uh, web application, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so if you have an idea of something you want to do, now is the time. I set up, like I says here, on Slack there will be a startup channel. So if you're looking for people to, you know, work on your project or you want to work on somebody else's project, go to the startup channel and chat up other people 
uh, see what they're up to, uh, see if you can join with them. So uh, that's it. <laughs>